Hello, Calvary. What a great night to come together and praise and worship our Savior together. And I pray that you would just enter in and calm your heart and your mind. No matter what's happened in your day, it's a great time to worship. So let's, let's enter in together. Let the King of my heart be the man.
might be happening in our country, in our household. But we can rest and know that you are God and you are sovereign. So we thank you, Lord, that you are good. And that you love us and you have a plan for us, Lord God. We thank you and we love you. Well, good evening, Calvary family. So glad you could be with us here tonight, Thursday night. Uh, looking forward to our devotion this evening. Um, Tuesday night's devotion, I encourage you to go back and uh, watch it if you didn't get a chance to. The topic of that is, this is your year. Because uh, I really believe that God has that word for you, that this is your year. Uh, tonight's devotion kind of builds a little bit off of um, Sunday's sermon because you know, when we talk about persecution and we talk about opposition that we know is coming because Jesus tells us it's coming, um, it's not necessarily like the most uplifting and encouraging thing. Uh, sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? I, um, I, I don't, I don't want to be persecuted. Um, I believe that when that comes, I will be able to, by the power of the Spirit and presence of Jesus, uh, withstand those things. Um, but you know, I mean, I. I grew up, I don't know if you, I, I know I've talked about it before. I grew up uh, in the, I was born in the 70s, but I grew up in the 80s. Uh, I'm still growing up here in the 2020s. Um, eventually, I will be an adult. I'm not sure what that date is. I believe uh, it's some in the mid-70s. I will actually be an adult, uh, but 70 years of age or so. Uh, I could be wrong. I, I might still be childish at that point. But anyways, I digress. Um, but I grew up in the season when... Um, the end times were very popular, especially uh, in the 80s and 90s. Everyone was looking towards the end of uh, the, nine, the you know, 1900s to be uh, Jesus coming back. How many of you remember the, the watch parties and all that stuff that people were getting ready for? And in the 80s, um, the late 70s, early 80s, there was a series of movies le released called A Thief in the Night. And so I grew up um, with the, this, this, and they're on YouTube. You can watch them. The music's awful and the costuming's hilarious, but the whole point of the movies is that the rapture has occurred and people are left behind and that's and you know so for me as a kid I grew up in that environment it's like growing up in the 80s during the cold war I grew up in a uh, and in in this area in New Jersey had the same thing I grew up um near Wright Patterson Air Force Base and we knew that Wright Patterson Air Force Base was on like the top 10 lists of places to be nuked in uh in the United States if a nuclear war broke out and so uh, we grew up knowing during the cold war that if there was a uh, nuclear war, we were going to die real quick. And that kind of <laughs> affects you, right? And so when we talk about opposition, I have this image in my head um, from The Thief in the Night, where they've locked you in jail and they're just waiting to cut off your head. That's not really encouraging, right, as we talk about opposition. But opposition can look at all sorts of different things. And so I don't want you to just to go to, like, in-game, worst-case scenario Christians being put into internment camps and all of that stuff. Um, but at the same time, while I don't want you to go worst case scenario, I do want us to be aware of the world that we lived in, uh, live, that we live in. And, um, and as I was thinking about tonight, I thought about two um, portions of scripture that I think are very important for us to remember. Uh, in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, it talks about all of the men that came to be with David when he was exiled at Ziklag. And, um, and in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, there's just a simple mention of the men of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. They came and joined David at Ziklag. We as Christians should endeavor... To be like the men of Issachar. Um, we need to be aware of the times that we are in. Not that we live fearfully. Not that we live uh, worried and terrified. But that we live aware. Because when you, when you look at what it said, the men, men of Issachar, they understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Which really connects to with what we talked about on Tuesday night. How do we know the times, and understand what Israel should do. Uh, not that America is Israel, but the church is uh, the kingdom of God. We need to understand what we, as believers, should do. Um, we have to be connected to the Holy Spirit. You're going to find over this next year that I'm going to keep coming back to the Holy Spirit. 
I'm going to keep hammering and emphasizing that we need to read our Bible, worship God, pray, and fellowship together, and we need to be connected to the Holy Spirit. We need to do these things. They're basic things, but this is how the church will thrive and grow in difficult times. And so the only way that we know what God desires for us to do is to be connected to the Spirit. And so I was thinking about the men of Issachar. I, it's one of my prayers is I want to be like the men of Issachar. I want to know our times, understand our times, and know what we are to do. And I, I, I really believe the way that we do it, again, reading the Bible, praying, uh, being connected to the Spirit, worshiping, fellowshipping together. Uh, but I think we can take inspiration from Nehemiah. Now, last year with the board, I, I gave out a, a, a wooden Roman gladius, which is a sword, and put it on a little stand. And you can see a plaque. You probably can't read it, but I'll read what it says to you. I keep this in my office. Uh, but here's what it says uh, on, on the plaque in front, uh, underneath the sword. Um because, you know, the sword, uh, it, it represents many things. It, it can be an offensive weapon, but it can also be a defensive weapon that deters an attack. And here's what um, it says in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 9. When they were talking about the opposition that Nehemiah was receiving to rebuilding Israel, uh, here's, here's the verse. It says, but we prayed to God and posted a guard day and night to meet the threat. We as Christians need to accept um, this idea that we need to know our times. We need to know what God desires for us to do. But we also need to be on guard, not in like ready to attack, but ready to to respond to what God is doing. I use the sword just because it was that idea of a guard. And um, the, the, you heard, you've heard the phrase, watchmen on the wall. Um, we have to be ready. Uh, gentle as doves, but wise as serpents. And the way we do this, it's not going to be a surprise. The way we do this is by listening to the move of the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we've heard this phrase that God works in mysterious ways. Or, and it's true that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But God doesn't necessarily want us to be in the dark. God wants us to be connected to him so that we can be made ready. Think about before Jesus was crucified. He didn't want to do it, right? I mean, it's not like, I mean, he, if you would, please take this cup from me. But he wasn't in the dark as to what he was going to do. And it's often the case for us that we want God to show us the whole thing, but we haven't done the first thing. I, I want to tell you, if, if we want to be the church that God has called us to be, and I believe that this is the year that we need to be focused on mission, we need to be targeting our purpose of telling people about Jesus. If we want to do that, we have to be we, we have to increase our connection to the Holy Spirit. Um, Paul says in the New Testament that I that he prays in the Spirit more than all of us. I would have that all of you pray in the Spirit, but I pray in the Spirit more than all of you. We need to be filled. And you're gonna say, Pastor Spencer, why do you keep saying that? Because it's absolutely essential to um, not just surviving this world, but thriving in it. The men of Issachar knew the times that they were in and understood what Israel was to do. When Nehemiah faced opposition, they prayed to God and established a watch day and night. We as believers need to prepare our hearts and our minds and our spirits to move when God says to move. Not to attack opposition, but to be able to withstand it and to grow the kingdom of God. Study the word of God, know the word of God, know the heart of God, know the spirit of God. And regardless of what happens around us, when we prepare ourselves 
and get connected to the Holy Spirit, we will be okay. Because our circumstances are not what dictates our joy, our happiness. My hope is not based upon what's going on around me. My hope is in the living Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I want to be able to respond to what he's doing. But I can only do that if I'm fully connected to the Holy Spirit. And that's my challenge for you tonight. Be connected to the Holy Spirit and allow God to shape you and prepare you, to mold you and make you like the men of Issachar, the watchmen on the wall, ready, understanding their times and knowing what Israel should do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. Father, I pray you prepare our hearts, our minds, our soul, our spirit. Make us ready to do that which you've called us to do. Strengthen us and encourage us. Fill us with boldness and bravery that can only come from your presence. Be with us so that we may respond when you call. We thank you. We praise you. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Hey, don't forget our uh, annual church fast begins this Sunday. We actually have a guest speaker. Really looking forward to it this Sunday. Dave Greco. Uh, he's gonna, it's going to be wonderful and phenomenal. So uh, hope to see you there. It's going to be a great time. God bless you. Have a great night. And hey, just before you go, let me know if the devotions have ministered to you. Just leave a comment below in the Facebook comments or in YouTube. And um, we're going to try to decide if we're going to keep on doing them or not. But let me know how they're connecting with you. And uh, maybe you give it a little share to help out your friends. God bless you. Have a great night.